It's Confirmation Sunday. Hmm. You guys ready for your test? Surprise! No, really. It's okay. Calm down. Everything will be all right. I have a poem for you this morning. Two roads diverge in the yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Does anybody know this poem? I got one hand. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, a few of you know it. It is... Robert Frost, Path Not Taken, is what it is. It's actually a poem that inspired a song of, that I truly love by David Wilcox called Hold It Up to the Light. The song about looking at our decisions and our life and how our life is actually a journey. And as we get to that crossroads in the woods or that crossroads wherever we're at and we're looking down those two paths and we're wondering which way we should go, we think, I have two choices, right? No, you actually have three because you can turn around and go back the way you came from. Life's not always easy. It's a bunch of paths and a bunch of choices that we have to make, that we have to walk down. And here we celebrate the season of Easter. And in most of our worship services since Easter, we've said something like, Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Okay, what if I told you I wanted to change that now? We're going to say, Christ is risen. Hallelujah. And you're going to say, so what? <laughs> right, exactly. Thank you. What does it matter? What does it matter if Christ is risen? What does it change? What's different in our lives with the fact that this man rose from the dead? Anything? We have a story this morning of Cleopas and his companion. I've read a lot of stuff this past week and a lot of people arguing about little arbitrary things about it, about how it's always portrayed as two men going on a trip from Jerusalem to Emmaus. Cleopas is the only one that's named, so why does the other companion have to be a guy? I thought, really? This is what we're arguing about, about this passage of Scripture, when there's other bigger things in this thing. But who are these two companions going on this walk? And when does this walk happen, right? This is week three of Easter. We're two weeks removed from the resurrection. But when does this story actually take place? It's Sunday afternoon of Easter, right? It says two days after all of these things took place. These two are walking, discussing on Easter morning or Easter afternoon. Walking and going on this journey from Jerusalem to Emmaus. And they're out for a nice walk, right? Or maybe they're running to get away from Jerusalem. Because what's going to happen? Cleopas and his companion were disciples. Now, they were not part of the twelve disciples, but they were disciples, people who had followed Jesus. And if our master just got killed, what's going to happen to us? So are they walking from Jerusalem, or are they running from Jerusalem? Like, I hope none of the eight of these do, after they get confirmed this morning, right? Oh, and that's funny. You're supposed to laugh at that. <laughs> Right? What normally happens in our churches when people get confirmed? It's okay. It's the truth. You can say it out loud. It won't make it any different. Right? We get people confirmed in our church and they think it's over. I've graduated. I'm done. I don't need to worry about this faith thing anymore. It doesn't have to be a part of my life journey. Well, let me tell the eight of you that that's a lie, number one. You still need to be involved in this community. You still need to be here, not only for yourselves, but for all of those people out there. Because they need you more, probably, than you need them, in some instances. Okay? This is about a journey that we're all on together. It's not about us going alone. The story this morning is not about Cleopas going on a journey by himself and meeting up with Jesus. It's about Cleopas and his companion. Because we go on these journeys. And as oftentimes as I told the children up here, Jesus comes along with us. And we can't see Him. Why can't we see Him? 
Why couldn't Cleopas and his companion recognize who he was when he came up walking alongside them? Why? Because they were prevented. Actually, the reading says that, yeah. And why were they prevented? See, we could get into a long discussion about this, about whether this is a theological concept where God is actually preventing them from seeing, or is it because of their own understanding of who Jesus was supposed to be or was that they were prevented from seeing him? Did God do it, or did they do it? I like to fall on the side of yes, because it could be either one of those. This morning I want to focus more on the second, because I think it was their understanding of who Jesus was and what had happened that it caused them not to be able to see him, right? Because as, it was, as one of the kids said, where was he? He was dead. They didn't expect him to be walking alongside of them, talking to them that afternoon. He just died two days earlier. So he's not supposed to be walking and talking anymore. He's not supposed to be doing this kind of stuff. So the person that we think Jesus is, is not this person here. And we can't get out of our box to understand that Jesus doesn't come to us the way that we want Him to come to us. Jesus comes to us as Jesus is. Whether we like it or not. Right? Jesus doesn't conform to our wishes. Jesus comes to us the way that God needs to come to us. And we're on a path. A journey. And Jesus joins us on that path and that journey. And if you haven't looked out here yet, I want you to look out here this morning at these projects. The one got turned off. Sam didn't know this, but his, his project played perfectly into everything that was happening this morning with his faith story of his faith journey or the path of his faith story and how things happen in our lives and we walk with God. There's other projects out here of God holding things in his hands, the whole world, right? He holds all of us and walks with us and holds us dearly and close to him. And there's projects that talk about how all of our life impact our faith. From popular literature to high school classes to understanding of who our friends are and how we interact with all of them. Right? Every last one of these projects out here uses a talent that one of these eight kids has to show how their faith has impacted their lives. To show that it's not just a simple little thing that they came and did for three years. But it's something that has become a part of who they are. And I pray that that continues beyond this day. Not only for yourselves, but for me. Because I said that those people out there need you, I also need you to be here. Because when we meet on Thursday nights and we talk about things, some of the things you all say is so profound that I don't know how to handle it. You say things about the scriptures and you say things about life that are just out there, beyond the scope of understanding. Um, but that's where you're at. And that's your life. And that's your journey. And because of that, we need to continue to be together. Not only for you, but for all of us. We're all in this journey together. And Jesus always comes with us. And if we can allow ourselves to not get caught up into our box, and understand that God is only one thing in one way. We'll be so open to understanding as He walks alongside of us to help us. Because not only is it God, but it's also the Holy Spirit. Our letter to Acts this morning talks about the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to Him. As He calls us to Him, the Holy Spirit is given to us. And we are filled with that Spirit and we are created and made children of God. And because of that, we need to continue to gather together. And each day, renew our baptismal vows. Right? You wash your face every morning. Hopefully. And Martin Luther said, as you wash your face, remember the words that were said to you in the day that you were claimed in your baptism. It's a starting anew. It's a starting afresh. Each and every day, it's a do-over, right? Because that's who our God is. Our God is a gracious God that allows us to get a do-over. And we remember our baptism, born anew, into a community where we share genuine mutual love, not caring that everybody is exactly like us, 
Not caring that everybody believes the exact same things that we do. Because you know what? If that's what you want, you're not going to find it. We're all in this together. Not to be robots, but to be who God created us to be. Walking forward in His love. In a genuine community. Because Jesus did all of this for each and every one of you. He went to the cross. He went to the grave. He rose again. And He gave you a chance to have a relationship with the Father in Heaven that will give you the life that no one else can give to you. So Jesus Christ is risen. And because of that, we can handle everything that we come to, even at that fork in the road where we have to wonder, should I go this path or this path? Choice is never going to be made clear. But if you walk with Christ and you understand that He's walking with you, whatever choice you make, Christ will always be with you. And He will show us a way to be in this world, to show it what He came to show us. Love, mercy, and grace that only comes from God. So here in a moment we're going to listen to a song by a gentleman who was with us on Wednesday night that I think encapsulates everything that we try to do as Christians. He talked about it on Wednesday night. Taylor Wilson talked about this song on Wednesday night. It's called Stay the Course. He talked about it, and it talked about how sometimes in life we find ourselves at choices, and we find ourselves at, at places that we have an impasse, and we have to figure out what we're going to do. We don't understand all the time how God is going to be with us, but God made promises to each and every one of us. And if we can understand that He's always with us, then even when it's hard, we can stay the course and make it through what's going to happen. So the eight of you this morning, as you come to affirm your baptismal vows, I pray for each and every one of you that this is not the end of your journey, that it's merely a step in this process, and that through your life that you will be able to stay the course knowing that Christ always goes with you.